How it works. Our ultrasonic and radar products work on the measurement principle called time of flight. Here we see a liquid level application being monitored by an ultrasonic device. The ultrasonic transducer emits high frequency pulse. This pulse travels down to the liquid level. When the echo strikes the liquid surface, it is reflected back up to the transducer. During this time, the ultrasonic device is listening for the reflected echo. This is shown in the graph window. The graph is called the echo profile. What does an echo profile tell us? The blue line is the echo profile. It is a graphical representation of a digital signal. At the front end, we have a relatively flat area. We call this the noise floor. This is background noise. The large bump on the echo profile is our true material echo. The smaller bumps following the true echo are indirect or false echoes. The line here is called the echo confidence marker. The height of the line indicates how confident sonic and process intelligence feel that this is a true echo. The green trough-shaped line is the echo lock window. The width of the echo lock window represents the measurement tolerance. If on the next pulse the true echo was located outside of the current echo lock window, this measurement would be rejected. Finally, we have this red line. The red line is our dynamic TVT curve. The TVT, or Time Varying Threshold Curve, is a mathematically constructed curve to help select the true material echo. Let's look at the sequence that Sonic and Process Intelligence use to select the true material echo. Filtering. If we were to look at a raw echo profile, it would look like this. This is a horrible echo profile. All those small spikes are making it difficult to see the true material echo. In most instances, these spikes are caused by electrical interference. With sonic and process intelligence, the device will automatically identify these spikes by the nature of their height and width. The profile is then processed through a spike filter and we get a nice, clean echo profile. Multi-shot sampling. The typical echo profile is not the result of one pulse. It is the average of a number of pulses. This is called multi-shot sampling. Each device has a different default value for the number of pulses or shots that it takes before processing the final echo profile. The device overlays a number of echo profiles on top of one another. Then, using sonic or process intelligence, it combines these profiles into one average profile. The average profile reduces the noise floor and gives a more accurate indication of the true material echo. TVT, Time Varying Threshold. The dynamic TVT, or time varying threshold curve, is a mathematically constructed curve to help select the true material echo. The position of the TVT above the echo profile is determined by the height of the echoes above the noise floor. In our time of flight products, the TVT curve dynamically floats above the echo profile. It allows the device to reliably track the true material echo as conditions in the vessel change. Let's have a look at how the dynamic TVT works. In this example, we see a strong material echo and a low noise floor. As the vessel begins to fill, the echo profile changes, but the noise floor remains constant. We begin to see multiple echoes following the true material echo. The dynamic TVT compensates for these strong multiple echoes by moving further away from the noise floor. Finally, we have an echo that is quite close to the roof of the vessel. We have many multiple echoes. The dynamic TVT adapts to the changes in the vessel. If our TVT curve was not dynamic, we would run the risk of having one of the multiple echoes selected as the true echo. With the dynamic TVT, we de-emphasize the influence of these false echoes and focus the device on the true material echo. The dynamic TVT curve is unique to Siemens ultrasonic and radar devices. None of our competitors have this feature. ALF algorithm. Sometimes you may have complex echo profiles, especially in solids applications. There may be many echoes that are potentially the true material echo. In this case, all of the echoes above the TVT curve will be selected for further evaluation. But which one is the true material echo? One method for selecting the true material echo is the ALF algorithm. ALF stands for Area, Largest, and First. The ALF algorithm will evaluate all of the echoes above the TVT curve and give them a score based on the amount of area under the curve, the height of the echo above the TVT, and the echo's position along the TVT curve. 
To give you an idea of how this works, let's look at this example. First, we will look at the area component. Each of the echoes that cross the TVT define a specific area. The echo with the largest area is given the highest score. In our example, this is the second echo. The second component is the large component. The echo with the largest height above the TVT curve will be given the highest score. Again, it is our second echo. The first component is next. The echo that comes first is given the highest score. All the component scores are totaled, and the echo with the highest total score is determined to be the true material echo. In this example, the highest score belongs to the second echo. This echo would be selected as the true material echo.